Simulation comes to us from the aviation industry, where pilots train for situations that they may see rarely, but they do it over and over and over again. The same is expected of us as healthcare workers. We are becoming experts in events that we don't see very often. This is Bob, our CAE mannequin, but when you're working with him, he's not Bob the mannequin, he's Bob the patient. Les mannequins se perfectionnent de plus en plus. On a des mannequins qui pleurent, qui toussent, qui peuvent trembler, convulser, etc. C'est vraiment un milieu idéal pour l'apprentissage et la pratique. Et c'est la place pour faire des erreurs et non auprès des patients. Donc, c'est vraiment des milieux favorables pour apprendre. So we need to drop the blood pressure. The application of simulation is booming. It's multiplying at an exponential rate in the healthcare industry. There's a lot of incredible technologies that are being worked on right now that can bring clinicians from a clinical setting such as the hospital and put them in an immersive setting that's as realistic as their clinical. Making sure the medication... ça se fait tout au long d'une vie, d'une carrière. Il y a des infirmières qui sont là aux soins intensifs depuis 20 ans, 30 ans, mais ils apprennent encore. Simulation really has the ability to improve how we work. It's not just about the hard skills, it's also about learning the soft skills, communicating, and how different professionals from different disciplines communicate as well. I feel a lot more confidence because I got to practice a lot of skills that are necessary when we deal with critically ill patients. When it actually happened to me with a real life patient at the beginning of my practice, I knew how to effectively implement interventions that were able to save my patient's life. It's always about the patient. Yes, it's education for our staff, but at the end of the day, working on a surgical simulator is all for our patient's benefit so we can have shorter hospital stays, better outcomes for our patients, better recovery time so that they can return to baseline as much as possible. That's really our main goal. Il y a des situations qui sont très rares auprès des patients, mais qui sont critiques. Donc, par la simulation, on peut pratiquer régulièrement ces situations-là, puis un bénéfice direct auprès des patients en termes de qualité et sécurité des soins. When the room is quiet, when people are communicating in a closed loop fashion, things are being asked, things are being done, that is a very reassuring thing for the patient. Being able to train with simulation, it's a lot safer for the patient, it's a lot safer for our teams, and patient outcomes are much better.